above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. You were here before the world began. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure
Good morning. It's our hope and prayer that as we gather together today that you hear God's voice. It's, I want this to be a congregation where we're always talking about what God has spoken to us. Because God is a talker. He's the best listener, is, but he's also quite a talker. And so I pray you hear his voice speaking to you today. That, that is our hope and that is our prayer. Today in the message we're going to look at three ways in which God talks to us. And next week, we're going to look at five other ways in which God speaks. So he has many avenues through which he speaks. The important part here is, are you listening? So look at somebody this morning and say, are you listening? Because he's got something loud and clear to speak to you today. Any birthdays today? I don't see any. <laughs> They'd be on the front, wouldn't they? Nothing. Nothing. No birthdays. Somebody. Kayla. 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 Is it Kayla's birthday? Okay. Happy Father's Day, Brian. <laughs> what do you have, Gail? Okay. Out in the lobby near the elevator, there are two things. There's bags of eggs that you can take and fill for our egg hunt coming up for Resurrection Sunday in preparation of that. So just take them, fill them, bring them back as soon as possible. Also, in your bulletin, you'll see that there is on the back where you can cut that off and sign up for a paint night and there's a sample of it it's beginner level it's really easy ladies only late well no we have men come and yeah mm -hmm. okay. yeah so anybody wants to join us come we'll do about 30 people at the max uh, sponsors women's outreach and then also jeff riddle is in well he's here right now but he will be in the back. He has some sausage, pork chops, tenderloin, fundraiser, fundraiser for Peru that he just did last night. last night, fresh. So see him. All right. So next Sunday is our uh, chicken chow down, and it's our mission banquet. We're inviting you to it. We'd like to fill the room up downstairs. Our goal is to raise $3,000 to help our people go to Uganda, go to Haiti, go to Peru, Lima, go to Peru, Puerto Maranado. We have 32 people going on missions this year. Give me a hallelujah. Wow, that is just the most we've ever seen. That's awesome. Maybe we'll double it next year. We'll see because I know you're already thinking, boy, I need to go on a mission trip. So um, four people are going to be in jail next week. Four people are going to be in jail downstairs and don't get to eat until we raise enough money to get them out. So Emily Wiley, I don't see Emily here yet, but she's going to be in jail. Uh, Shelby Morris, uh, I don't know, I don't see Shelby here yet. Brad Barnett and myself are going to be in jail. We don't get to eat until we raise enough money. The first person will come out at $750, all right? And you get to vote who that person is, all right? You get to vote who that person is. Second person will come out at $1,500, the third person at $2,250, and the last person We'll get out of $3,000, our goal, all right? So they only eat when we raise enough money to get them out of that jail. So uh, come, eat heartily. We're making barbecue, right, chicken barbecue right over there. Bring it over fresh. It's going to be so good. Bring a friend, fill that hall up downstairs, and uh, help us out as we prepare for these different trips. Now, did you feel that wind this week? Did you feel that wind? And now we're just praying that these songs that you sing, that the Spirit just blows through here even harder. Amen? Amen. Even harder than that wind blew outside. So blow us away. Hey, would you stand, stand with us, please? All right, so Pastor Fred already set the pace that uh, God likes to talk. The key is, you know, are you listening? But right now, we're going to speak his words because these songs are his words written by someone else to glorify him. So we're going to talk to him a little bit, and then we're going to listen. All right? So let's praise God. to worship 
One day. One day every tongue will confess you are now. One day every knee will bow. Still the great remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come. Come. Now is the time to to the Lord.
It's a little bit slower. It's called Jesus, We Love You. It's like a waltz, but it's got really great words. Uh, it's done by uh, Bethel Music, Paul McClure. It's the green. The old things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. Things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again. You caused your sun to shine on darkest night. For all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. The hopeless have found their hope. The orphans now have a home all that was found its place in you you lift our weary head you make us strong instead you took these rags and made for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song Jesus we love you oh how we love you you are the one of our heart Jesus, we love you. Oh, how we love you. You are the one of our hearts adore. All our affection. Our affection. 
our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus our affection our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus our affection our devotion poured out on Oh, how we love you. You are the one our hearts adore. You are the one our hearts adore. Give God a hand. We have a message this morning from our children in Peru, so I'm going to ask Cheyenne to come up here and interpret it for us, because it is in Spanish, and a lot of us may not be able to understand what they're saying otherwise. So if we get that video gone, Cheyenne is going to share the message they have for us. You're going to have to lip read. Uh. <laughs> Let's try that with the sound. These are our five children. That's Soy Mira, tengo, tengo diez años y gracias por todos, por, gracias por todos los regalos que han dado. Buenas tardes y gracias, Germán. Hola. Soy Mira, tengo, tengo diez años y gracias por todos, por, gracias por todos los regalos que han dado. Les queremos mucho. Buenas tardes, soy Carlos, tengo siete años, gracias por los regalos de Navidad. Carlos. Buenas tardes, soy María y tengo ocho años, gracias por los regalos y las cartas que me han dado. Les quiero mucho. Buenas tardes, soy Beatriz y tengo diez años y gracias por las tarjetas y por todo lo que nos han regalado. Les quiero mucho. Buenas tardes. Soy Kevin, tengo siete años, gracias para el galo, en Navidad, para la carta, gracias. Do they normally sit that still? No. <laughs> so from left to right is Carlos, and he's seven, Maria, who is eight, Miriam, who is ten, Beatrice, who is also ten, and Kevin, who is also seven. Maria has a birthday this month. I did not know yes, that. Yes, Pam's Home Church has adopted her, and they're sending her birthday cards for her eighth birthday because they thought she was eight. Uh, She's going to be nine. Yeah. Um, and they pretty much said thank you for all the clothes, gifts, and cards that you all have sent us, um, and they loved us all very much. What's Buenas Tardes mean? They all said Buenas Tardes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mm. Buenas mañana. Mm. Good morning. <laughs> all right, so we're going to Peru. What do you plan on doing while you're there? We are going to repaint the outside of the orphanage house and fix the front gate. Okay, what's wrong with the front gate? People can just drive right around it. Yeah, we've got a gate, but we don't have a wall. So we've got to put up a wall, just a little wall on the side. So people just run right through your property. When we have little children there, we're a little more cautious of that happening. They actually have some people living on their land in the back right now. What are they doing back there? They're mining. They're mining on their property. What are they mm -hmm. mining for? I have no idea. <laughs> if it's gold, I'm going to go back and visit them. Okay. Yes. Uh, Satan brings some of the gold nuggets into the uh, uh, stores where you trade in your money. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. So there are nine of us going. Mm -hmm. Ten count your dad once he gets there. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They do want us to fix the roof on the one building. They want to make a church out there. Right beside, so they have a building, they want us to put a new roof on it. Mm -hmm. I think we'll just send money for them to do that. That roof is way up there. I don't want to go up there. So, all right. Well, thank you. And those of you gone to Puerto Maldonado, if you'll stand, those of you who are going to Puerto Maldonado this year, right back here, we got a few of you. A little bashful. Okay, there they are. Good. All right, David. 
All right. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. Excuse me. Uh, I get to lead you all in communion today. I'm super excited about it. I'll go ahead and have the uh, deacons begin to take their places at the, at the certain areas. I'm going to read for you uh, from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. If you'd like to turn there, starting in verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. I had the opportunity yesterday to take a group of young people to Woodstock to an apologetics conference held by a man named Brent Kunkel. And uh, one of the things that really struck me yesterday about this conference was I don't know if we really understand uh, how legitimate the scripture is. Like when you look at the history of, uh, of literature, any literature, the Bible is, has been so proven by so many things. And sometimes we think, even in ourselves, in our own spiritual lives, we look at it as a way, well, maybe it's just some stories. Like maybe there's some good stuff in here. Maybe there's some stories. But one thing I came out of yesterday knowing was that these words that are written in Scripture were the words that were written in the Scriptures the first time around. And they are the Word of God. And so when we read a Scripture like this, this is coming from the mouth of our Lord and Savior. And so as we come forward to take the bread and the cup, let us come forward in the knowledge and the boldness of knowing these words are the words of God. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we have a basis to stand on, Lord. An ultimate basis to make our moral decisions and the decisions we have through our life. And Lord, as we prepare to come forward and take this bread and cup, knowing that you yourself have commanded us to, let us take a moment to make sure we come to take this bread and cup with a clean heart. Lord, let us leave the things that have been hindering us this week. Let us give them to you, lift them up to you. We thank you for the amazing and powerful God that you are. We thank you for our Lord and Savior who was the perfect sacrifice to us, Lord. Let us not forget that as we go out into this world to be a light, to be a shining light of who Christ is. We ask all this in your holy, precious name. Amen. So you can come out your left, go back your right, and then we will take it together once we're all seated.
I can only imagine the smile on the Lord's face as he watches all of us come forward and take the bread and the cup. It is truly an amazing thing to watch a congregation come together to remember our Lord and Savior, especially as we enter into this season of his death on the cross. It, the saying isn't in the bulletin this week, so here's what's going to happen. If you know it, you can say it along with me. If you don't quite remember it, just listen and take it in. Uh, we'll start by taking the bread. This bread which we share is the communion of the body of Christ. We'll take the cup. This cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. we can have our ushers come forward after the offering is taken uh, we won't dismiss the children right away because we're going to be having them come forward and sit on the front pews so uh, as the ushers go back if the children want to come on up and grab a seat in some of these front pews come on up let's pray dear Heavenly Father we thank you for being able to come to the table. Lord, we come to it here, and in eternity there will be a day where we come to the table with one another, and the most important thing will be your face. So we thank you for that. The assurance that we have here on earth that when this life passes, that the greater thing will be before us. We lay aside earthly bodies and earthly burdens, and we will take on heavenly bodies and we will take on heavenly visions and and see you and so we thank you for that lord that hope that we have lord late may these tithes and these offerings enable us to go out and spread it to our community and to the ends of the earth as, as you have asked us in jesus name we pray amen Over here. You may notice the flowers at the front today. Those were put here in memory of Winston Hensley, who passed away this last week. Um, Winston and Phyllis were over in Hawaii at the same time we were in Hawaii, and that's when Don Ho passed away. And um, Don Ho was a famous singer from Hawaii. And they were taking his ashes out into the ocean. And Phyllis remembers that. And we were talking about that the other day. She remembers as they were taking his ashes out into the ocean, the kayak that his ashes were in and his family began to sink. So they had to call 911 as they were going out in the ocean. And the helicopter had to come and save them from their kayak sinking out there in the ocean. So eventually they finally did scatter the ashes in the ocean. And that next morning I remember going out and having seen that the night before, and I soaked in the ocean for a while because I was hoping his voice would soak into me so I could sing a little better. Didn't work, didn't work. So if you ever had that opportunity, just skip it. It's not gonna do any good to your voice. If you can't sing now, you're never ever gonna be able to sing. That's just how I, I have to accept that. But uh, I'll still make a joyful noise. It won't sound like singing, but it will sound like a joyful noise. So I appreciate those who can sing and sing well. Also, we express today our prayers and sympathy to the family and friends of uh, Mike Alexander and Jean Alexander, whose mother Peggy passed away this week. That funeral service is on Tuesday. And on Monday of this last week, we had our service for Lois Mitchell. Appreciate those of you who were there to support the family and continue to do so in the days ahead. So good morning. How are you all doing today? I'm going to read you one Bible verse um, out of 1 John 5. It says... He who has Jesus has life. 
He who does not have Jesus does not have life. So if you have Jesus in you, you have life. If you don't have Jesus in you, you don't have life. So let me ask you a question. Would you rather be a jelly bean or a lima bean? What would you rather be? Why would you rather be a jelly bean? Huh? Why would you rather be a jelly bean? It's sweeter. It's sweeter than a lima bean? Okay. So I had a friend this week who gave me four bags of black jelly beans. Anybody like black jelly beans here? Do you? Yeah, it's my favorite, black jelly beans. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to have Glenn come and plow my dirt. I'm going to till it, and then I'm going to take all these black jelly beans out, and I'm going to plant them, and I'm going to get some black jelly bean trees, and I'm going to have lots of jelly beans to share with everybody, right? What do you mean? You mean you can't plant those. I can plant them. They won't grow. Anymore. They won't grow. Why not? Because they're, 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 okay, they're not even beans. They're, they're candy. not even beans. They're called jelly beans. They're candy. They don't even mean they're beans. They, they don't, don't even grow in a plant. They're not even seeds. They they don't don't have have they're not even. They look like seeds. They, don't have they aren't. They aren't. They're they're jelly. Jelly. It doesn't matter what it's called. It matters if it actually does it. Okay, so they call them jelly beans, but they're not really beans. No. Well, I'm calling Brock's company and asking them about that because I've been deceived. Now, let me tell you why black jelly beans won't grow. There's no life in them. There's no life. But lima beans. What happens if I plant a lima bean in the ground? Why does it grow? Because there's life in there just waiting to get out. And that's what happened when Jesus came into our life. There was this life inside of it just waiting to get out. When Jesus came in, boom, we sprung forth. Now, when I plant this, where do I plant it? In the dirt. And what's it got to do? It's got to work up through the dirt, and then the hot sun is going to shine on it. And then the rain is going to spit all over it. Then it's going to get hot again. It's going to rain. It's going to go through all that adversity. But in all that adversity, it's going to grow taller and taller and taller until finally one day, beans begin to appear. And I have not one lima bean, but lots of lima beans on that plant because there's life in it. Like the giant and the beanstalk. Like the giant and the beanstalk? You think... That was a real bean. We need to talk after church, okay? okay. I, watched, I watched that movie. All right, you watched the movie? That makes it real? Yeah, it's real. No. All right, well, I'm going to let you take a jelly bean on your way to Children's Church. Thank you for helping out today. It's important to have life in you, and Jesus gives us life. Don't step on each other. Don't step on me. Hey, that's my wallet. Bring that back. I've never had a black jelly bean before, so I'm trying it. You never had a black jelly bean, but you're going to try it. All right, I saw you take three. Get back here. I saw a black jelly bean. Whatever color you want. Okay. What color do you want? Pink. It's all yours. Hey, buddy. Green goes with your hood. All right, thank you. Let's go back over there. Gets that from his grandma. I didn't say which one. <laughs> It's been a long time since I heard from fill in the blank. I had a friend, best friend growing up, we hadn't heard from one another for 30 years. Finally, I called him up a few years ago just to chat. Best friend's growing up, 30 years. It's been a long time since I heard from. As your pastor, the last thing I want you to put that blank is God. It's been a long time since I heard from God. 
because my God is a talker. We see it throughout the word. And God is so wanting to have a conversation with you. In fact, he was ready this morning before you came. He was ready last night when you went to bed. He was ready yesterday afternoon. Yesterday, he's been ready. So if you can't remember the last time you had a conversation with God, I've got to fix that today, okay? Got to fix that. Because we don't want it to be that it's been a long time since you heard from God. We say actions speak louder than words. You believe that? Actions speak louder than words? And that's true, except in one case, unless God's doing the speaking. All right? And those words are equal to his actions. I want to hear his voice as much as I want to see what he does. The Bible says God demonstrated his love in this way, that he gave his only son for our sins. He loved us so much, he gave his only... That's our message to the world. Life begins when I understand and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior who died on the cross for my sins. That's when I begin to spring forth. That life was just waiting to come forth. I'm not going to live life as a jelly bean. I'm not going to live life without the abundant life. I'm going to live life that springs forth because I hear God say, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So yeah, actions speak louder than words unless God is doing the talking. May he speak to you clearly today. I read a story this week about a woman who was proposed to by her boyfriend. He had a ranch out west, and he wanted her to come and be his wife and help him with the ranch. But she was a flight attendant, and she enjoyed flying. And so she said, just give me a little bit of time to think about it. So she got on a plane to fly back home. And as she was working, there was a moment when she needed to go use the... the, the laboratory, the ladies' room. And so she went in, and it was right at that time that severe turbulence hit the plane. And when you're in that laboratory and severe turbulence hit the plane, there's a sign that comes on. And the sign came on for her, and it said, return to cabin. So she took the next flight back out west, accepted his proposal, and moved into his cabin. <laughs> oh, if only. God would be, speak so clearly all the time. But I think he does. I think he does. I think the burden now is on our part to do the listening because God is a talker. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 1, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times. How many times? At many times and in various ways. Ways. I want to take a look at some of those ways this morning. Ways in which God spoke in the past, because there are times, there are days that we wish God would speak to us in that way. But we're going to see that these prophets wish for something more, something even better. Here we have the story of Moses. It says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flames of fire. We underline that word, the, please. Not an angel of the Lord, but the angel of the Lord. That's significant. Because in the Old Testament, when we see the angel of the Lord, angel also means messenger. The messenger of the Lord was Jesus appearing, either in the flesh or through his voice at that time. So when I read the angel of the Lord, it is a reference to Christ before he was born in the manger. See, Jesus has always existed. His life didn't start uh, whenever he was born in the manger. He came down and descended and was born in a manger. So it says, Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. We wonder how people can be thrown into a lake of fire and not burn up. Here you have an example of a fire that's burning that does not consume what it's burning. The last thing I want to experience myself is a fire that does not consume, amen? And I thank God that he spared me from that through his son, Jesus Christ. It seems so simple. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. That seems so simple. But a lot of the world walking around with the hand, I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I don't want, I don't want to hear about Jesus. I don't want to talk about religion. I want to hear about a cross that I had to take and carry. But you, you've got life and you're springing forth through all the adversity. So Moses thought, I'll go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up. So here were the angels of the Lord appearing in the flames of fire in a bush. And now, notice who does the talking. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush. Wait, who's in the bush? 
the angel of the Lord. Who's the angel of the Lord? Jesus is the angel of the Lord. And now we see God called to him from within the bush because Jesus is God who appeared in the flesh. And he calls out, Moses, Moses. He speaks audibly. In the Old Testament, we often see God speaking audibly to someone so that they can actually hear his voice. And there are people today with, oh, if only I could hear God's voice audibly. I wish I could. But the prophets wish for something bigger, something more. There's another example of Samuel, a little boy. You don't have to be older to hear God's voice in the Old Testament. The little boy heard his voice, Samuel. And he goes running over to Eli, who is his caretaker. What do you want? Eli says, I didn't call you three times. Finally, Eli gets it. God's talking to you. The next time you hear the voice, say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Look at somebody this morning and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. In fact, that's a prayer I have each day. As I start today with prayer, I ask God to speak to me and speak through me. Now, I know it's not going to be audibly. It could be, but it's probably not going to be audible. But it's still going to be clear. So my prayer is this. Lord, give me the ears of Samuel that I might hear your voice. I won't hear it audibly, but I will hear it loud and clear in a number of different ways. So we often have people who wish God would speak to the model. And God, if you'd only say something out loud, I'd really, really believe in you. It'd bring me some real encouragement. But Moses and all these prophets who saw the burning bush and heard God in other ways, they had a bigger wish. They wished for something more than to hear God audibly. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. The high priest of Israel had this outfit that was spectacular. It had all these precious stones on it. And then we believe it had this pocket, like right over the heart. And in the pocket he put two other stones, one Urim and one Thummim. And one stone, if it was pulled out, declared you guilty. The other stone, if it was pulled out, declared you not guilty. The one stone, if it was pulled out, don't go to war. God is speaking. The other stone, if it was pulled out, go to war. So the high priest was the only one with access to this at that time. And he would wear that. And when it came time to go to war, what do we do, high priest? And he would reach in, and whichever stone he pulled out was believed to be the voice of God for them at that moment. Don't go to war. Okay, we'll wait. But it was the other stone, go to war. There's a story of Jonathan, who was the son of the king, and they were in battle, and everyone else was kind of holding back, but he was like, right, right there, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go. And he took his armor bearer and went over by himself to face the Philistine army, and he started cutting them down, and the next thing you know, they got all confused, and they started fighting each other, and Saul hears it. He says, all right, let's go to battle. And don't eat anything along the way. I don't know why you'd say such a thing at that moment while you're thinking, don't eat anything, because they were famished. And so once you know it, on their way, it's a field full of honey. There's just honey everywhere. The bees have been busy. There's honey everywhere. You've got to run by that. You're starving to death. You're going to go fight. But the king has said, don't eat the honey. They go. They win the battle. They're celebrating. Saul offers up a prayer. He's not getting an answer. Something happened here. He has the lots, the stones, the umum, urum, and the thummim. Starts to pull them out. Okay, one you. You can go over there. One you. One you. And eventually, it was Jonathan, his son. What did you do? Well, I put my staff in honey and ate it. Well, then you die. Because I said, if anybody eats out, eats out honey, any food between now and that battle... They die. And all the men look at him and said, he wasn't here. He didn't hear that said. You cannot kill him. He's the one who led us into victory. So I had to wonder. If he's pulling those lots out and there's only him and his son left, who is the real problem here? 
as we continue to read the story, we see Saul was the one with the problem. So, wouldn't it be nice? Now, guys, if you were to look at your wife today and say, you know, before I ask you to marry me, I flipped the coin, and I said, heads, I ask her, tails, I don't. You'd be toast, okay? You'd be toast. We don't work that way. But sometimes we wish it would be that easy. Just flip a coin and know God's will in my life. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not sure of God's will in your life, are you spending enough time listening? Because he's telling you. He's talking. And he's already said, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. I will make, Jesus keeps all promises, amen? He's going to make you a fisher of men. You will draw people to him because he lives in you. And there's life. And people know the difference between a jelly bean and a lima bean. And there are times in life when they're going to indulge in the jelly beans, but sooner or later, they're going to need the lima bean. And they know who the lima bean is. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. There were the prophets. They could tell you something that was going to happen 700 years in advance. Isaiah, he was pierced for our transgressions. How did he know that a soldier was going to take a spear and pierce Jesus in the side? Because God, who knows the future, made it known. And he spoke through that prophet. You know, sometimes the weatherman really doesn't know what's going to happen tomorrow, do they? It's our experience. And I have no clue what this next year might hold, but I know who holds it. And that's where I put my trust, not in what I know, but in what he knows. But here's the key, getting to know what he knows. And he revealed it to the prophets. All the, He's going to be buried in a rich man's cave. How did they know that? The one who knew let them in on the secret. We may wish we knew the future, but the prophets wish for something more. What could you want more than hearing the voice of God being able to take two little stones and make a decision, or being able to forecast the future. What could you want more than that? This. They wanted to hear and see the voice of Jesus. What you have come to know through God's holy word. I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see what you see and have not seen it, and to hear what you hear and have not heard it. You've been let in on this great mystery, this great secret that God sent his only son to die for you and me. They wished they could have been there to see that. They wished they could be here now to know what was written in our New Testament. So it says, in the last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The number one way in which God will speak to you is through his word. Jesus said, you cannot live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. See, this is a living book. There's no book like it. There are a lot of good books that I've read. And you know, I've read them once, and I know the end of the story, and I lay it down, and I say, that was a great book. You should read it. And you'll read it once, you'll lay it down, and you'll pass on. This is one you keep. Because you read it over and over and over again. And you keep finding new stuff in there because it's living and it's active. It's different than any book in all the world. Christ and the Tuxedo. Christ and the Tuxedo. It was a Russian play. And a famous Russian actor got up and portrayed the part of Jesus. And in that part of Jesus, there comes a point where he has to recite two verses from the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And at that point in the play, he's supposed to take off the clothes he's wearing and request the tuxedo for Christ, which they would bring over and he would put on to mock your faith. Those who are in the play with them are atheists as well. The problem on this day is that Alexander gets up there and says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, 
And the Spirit of God, by reciting the word, comes down upon his heart so heavy that at that moment he comes to believe what he's reciting. And he continues through all the Beatitudes until those on the side of the stage who recognize that he has not stopped reading the word and what is happening begin to boo and ask for the curtain to be pulled down. But the curtain is not pulled down until Alexander looks toward the heaven and says, I believe. And right there on that stage, a hard-hearted atheist who had had his hands over his ears all of those years was melted by the word of God. Give God a hand for that. <laughs> Woo! I can't do that, but the word of God can. I can't do that, but when I preach the word of God, it can happen. Because this word is powerful. It's how God primarily chooses his way to speak today. Next Sunday, we're going to be looking at dreams, and we're going to be looking at visions, and how the Spirit speaks to us, and five other ways in which God speaks. But today, we're looking at three primary ways in which God speaks, and the first is through his word. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. My practice is not to read a chapter of the Bible today. My, chapter, my, my practice is not to read three chapters of the Bible today. My practice is this. I read until I hear something. I read until I hear something. I read until I get a question. Wait a minute. What's that mean? Why is that jumping out at me? I read until something becomes clear. Wait, I haven't seen that before. I've read this a hundred times and I haven't seen it before. Why haven't I? Because God is speaking to me at that moment. So I read until I hear something. Look at somebody this morning and say, read until you hear something. Where do you go to be alone with God to hear his voice? See, when I read his word, I'm reading his words to me. So I read till I hear. There are days when I can read three chapters. It's just going in one ear and out the other ear. Yes, that happens to your pastor too. A lot on our minds, a lot on our plate, whatever might be going on. So I had to make it a practice. Read until you hear. That might mean two verses some days. That might mean the second verse I read stops me. Okay, if it's saying something, stop. Pause. What is he saying? Because God has just whispered to you. Now make sure you understand what he's whispering. I have a friend, uh, Mike Alexander. Mike said, in a text this week, I can read you some Bible scriptures. And Mike's, Mike's uh, mother had just passed away. He knew where to turn. The Bible. I need God to speak to me. So I sent him Philippians chapter 1. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I sent him Revelation 21.4, there shall be no more pain, no more sorrow, no more tears, no more death. I sent him John 14, behold, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and receive you unto myself, that where I may be, you may be also. And a few days later, he said, thank you for the verses. They're a true godsend. Because the Bible speaks. It speaks from the heart and to the soul. It's the best thing we have to offer a world that's hurting, to a world that's angry, to a world that doesn't know where to turn. My opinion would just be another opinion. But the word, it's everlasting. Read until you hear something. Second, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Paul says, in fact, this is the shortest verse in the Bible. Did you know that? This is the shortest verse in the Greek. In the Greek, pray without ceasing. And I think God made it that short so he'd really get it. Okay, this isn't going to be complicated. Pray. Okay, pray without ceasing. Pray until you hear something. If you haven't heard from God, don't blame him. He's a talker. We had Lois' funeral on, on Monday. Sam had shared a story where he was talking to someone, and he had said to them, I haven't spoken to my wife in a week. I said, that's horrible. Why? And Sam said, well, I didn't want to be rude and interrupt her. <laughs> if you knew Lois, 
Let us love the talk. God loves the talk. And see, part of prayer is not doing the talking, but doing the listening. And that part is every bit as important as the talking, because that part helps me to understand if the talking part was in line with his will for my life. Otherwise, if I'm just doing the talking, I don't have anybody to correct my selfish prayers. Can I say a prayer, selfish prayer? You bet I can at times. I know what I want, but I don't always know what I need. Or I don't always know that God needs to stretch my faith just a little bit more to make me a little bit stronger and help me minister a little bit better. That's that growing up through the ground and dirt stuff. Jesus said, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to stand in the synagogues and at the street corner that they may be seen by others. And when they'd pray, they knew all the names of God and they'd go right through it. It was very impressive to stand there and listen to them. He says, don't do that. They've got their reward. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to find a room all by yourself. I want you to go into it. I want you to close the door and now pray to your father who's in secret. So why do you think he wants you to get away from everybody and everything and get into a room? Because that's how you can listen. Otherwise, I mean, I can pray to God when I'm in my car with the radio on and my wife talking to me and two grandchildren in the back kicking my seat and maybe arguing with one another. I can pray to God. I just can't pray with them. I don't get to hear his voice in the midst of all that chaos. You know, men are not multitaskers. Ladies, you understand that already, don't you? We can do one thing, do it well, we can't do two. So there will be times when I'm sitting there watching a television program and my wife is sitting six inches away from me and she will say something and I will not hear it because I am tuned into the TV and I don't want to miss what they see on TV. Now it sounds like that's more important than what she's saying to me. I just can't multitask. You can. I could be watching a TV while you're doing five things in the kitchen, all right? You ladies are great. Guys are not. But when it comes to prayer, we all need that room, that place of quiet where we can hear his voice. Pray until you hear something. Look at somebody this morning and say, pray until you hear something. And if you don't have patience, prepare to get it. Because sometimes it can take a long time sitting there quietly before the Lord. We like our noise pollution. It's not good for us, but we become accustomed to it. Eliminating that noise pollution is an important part of hearing God. Finally, this morning, and we'll move further next week and look at some other, other ways in which God speaks, uh, oftentimes dreams, which can be very interesting. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. They'll tell their story. This is what God has done in my life. As our worship team comes up, they're going to sing a, another song. And you know what that song is? It's someone's story. Someone wrote this song because God moved in their life in such a way that they had to write these words down and say, world, here's my story. Let me tell you what God has done in my life. A gentleman was visiting me in church this week. He likes to go up to the observatory on his way up that night with his friends. There were clouds out. And you can't observe the stars when the clouds are out. One of the friends was a pastor. So he looked at the pastor. He says, do something about those clouds. No pressure. So the pastor, dear Lord, we'd like to see the stars tonight. Please remove the clouds. So they go into the observatory. They get things set up. They look outside, the clouds are gone, the stars are shining. That's a story. I love those kind of stories. And God is writing his story, your testimony in your life, so that others can hear his voice through your story. I want you to remember this. Your life, your story, your testimony, your marriage, your friendship, your reaction is the only Bible some people will ever read. They're not going to open that book. But the book will open through your story. And it will open through your failures. God doesn't waste anything. 
Just because something failed doesn't make you a failure. You're still a child of God. It will speak through your struggles. It'll speak through your victories. It'll speak through your answered prayers. It'll speak through your unanswered. I've been praying for that for 36 years. Well, I guess I shouldn't give up. I've only been praying for 12 years. You've got a lot of patience, more than me. So now they go and pray for, yeah. And they will hear God's voice through your story. That's why it's important that we listen. So he speaks to us and through us. Live a life that reaches beyond the stars to the one who's the creator of the stars, who desires today to speak with you. Young and old. Will you stand with me as we hear our last testimony, our last story in this song. The song is My Heart is Yours. You to come to the altar to pray, to I seek his voice. I give you my life. To ask for better ears. Stronger faith. And you are my God. You are my love. Jesus. Jesus. Just lift your hands to God and say, I want to hear you more clearly, Lord. My heart is yours. My heart is yours. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. My heart is yours, my heart is yours. Take it all, take it all, my life in your hands. Take it all, take it all.
my life in your hands. Amen. Repeat after me. Read until you hear the voice of God. Pray until you hear the voice of God. Live until they hear the voice of God. Let me send you out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity we have to come into this building to hear your word, Lord, and, and leave and go out here uh, uplifted with a clear mind, Lord. Right now, I just pray that we would all receive the ears of Samuel so that we can hear, Lord, and that we would surrender not only that part of our life, Lord, but our time and our talents and the things you have blessed us with. So as we go out into this world, let us be a blessing to everybody we bump into, Lord, and let us be listening for your voice. I ask all this in your holy, precious name. Amen. Amen.